guys, how's it going? It's Morgan coming to you from Highland Cycles with another instructional video. Today we're going to be putting a top end in this YZ. Um, then after that I'm going to be putting the electric start in from uh, Panthera Motorsports. So the video today is just going to be the top end. Make sure you subscribe and tune in for the electric start. I'm pretty excited about that. I've been waiting a long time to get that, but um, it's finally here. There's the parts right there. Really stoked about getting that in, but uh, I'm gonna start with a top end. Um, I'm gonna probably won't be super in depth. I've already filmed a really in depth video of a YZ250 top end. Put a card right up here if you want to check that out. Um, but I'll be kind of doing just touching on all the main points today as we get this thing done. So pretty excited. Here we go. All right, guys, first things first, gotta drain the coolant out of it, get the pipe off of it. Probably gonna take the subframe <coughs> off and get everything out of the way because, like I said, right after this, I'm putting an electric start on this thing, so I need it all clear, everything out of the way, so I can get to everything super easy. You know, <laughs> I want, I mean... All right, so we got the subframe, we got the carburetor out of the way, pipe off, coolants out of it. So now it's time to start taking out just the simple stuff. So the next thing that I do is get the head stays out, motor mounts right here. Um, those are also called head stays sometimes. So get those out of the way. Then we're gonna take the head off will be the next thing. Um, I get that up and out of the way. Then we're gonna take the power valve cover off, take the, um, unhook the power valve from the cylinder so that it can slide up. Uh, then we'll take the cylinder nuts off and then we should be able to just slide it right off. Now the bike has been running perfectly so hopefully there is no issues. Um, there is a chance that when I do this I'm going to find something wrong with the cylinder and have to send it out or whatever. Really hoping that isn't the case. It feels great, runs great. But the thing is when you do things like this you always run that, you know, it's always a possibility. But that's also why you do maintenance top ends and things like that is to catch things before they leave you stranded or before something blows up and causes problems so gonna get that off take a look um, also i'm doing this now um, i really don't know how many hours are on the bike since the last top end but uh, i think it's probably about a hundred we're gonna get it done and then i'm putting an hour meter on so that i can keep really close track of a the motor and then really more importantly b the uh, electric start so I can keep really good track of how many hours are on that thing how it's working and all that stuff so we can keep checking in with you guys on how that thing's holding up pull this off gonna use the uh, impact to do that uh, don't need to be real careful on removing that kind of stuff uh, so get that out of the way then we'll take the head off and take a look in from the top There's what the head looks like. Good thing is, no dings. <laughs> so that's good. Let's take a look inside. Oh, so far, looks pretty good. Um, I can see some up and down marks on the cylinder, but I think those are um, just superficial, just some carbon, stuff like that from where the ring end gaps are. So. I think we're gonna be good. Let's go ahead and unhook that power valve, show you what that looks like. Then we'll slide that thing off and take a good look at the cylinder. All right, guys, so let's talk a little bit about power valves. Um, if you don't know, uh, what a power valve does on a two-stroke is it effectively lowers the port height, the upper port height of the exhaust port and makes the piston as it comes up start to compress earlier than it would if it were open. So it begins its compression uh, lower down in the cylinder which then allows it to compress more making more low end power and then as the RPMs come up that power valve slowly moves up and out of the way um, allowing the motor to breathe better up top making more top end power so it broadens the power band on these things um, so the way Yamaha does that is this is the rod the rod comes down in here goes and it goes over on a shaft across here and right here is the power valve governor and it's spinning like this all the time and as it spins faster there's little balls that swing out kind of like a recluse and they 
move and they make this they 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 swing out that makes the there's like a I don't know how to describe it. a little groove in here it makes that move in that then lifts this up opening the power valve it twists and opens everything up so we got to unhook this and one thing you want to do so if you buy a new YZ I don't know anymore hopefully they still do this they give you a little pin and it's a pin that you want to stick uh, right in here when you're undoing it because if you try to just undo this with an impact or something like that you can actually break parts in here so you need to be able to stop it like that and then loosen this bolt there we go so if you guys are doing this at home which I highly recommend you do because rebuilding two-stroke top ends is actually not that hard and it's something you should be able to do if you own one and it's fun it's enjoyable uh, knowing the, your motor inside and out but you want to be careful. There's lots of little parts here. So you got the bolt, you got a washer. You got the rod, and that's going to come off. All right? And then you've got this little spacer. Okay? So you don't want to lose any of that. I'm going to go set it over here. Okay, so now we're unhooked completely. The cylinder can come off without any problem. So now I'm going to grab a wrench. We're going to undo the base nuts, pull this thing off. And take a good look inside, uh, make sure everything's good, and we're going to put it back together. All right, so that looks really pretty stinking good. I honestly really don't know how many hours are on it, but the piston looks awesome. Um, something you guys might be noticing, see the bluing right there and right there? So that is normal on Yamaha cranks because the pin to the web fit is what they call an interference fit. And what an interference fit means is that the pin is actually bigger than the hole that it goes into. So they have to super duper heat up the hole to make it grow, expand, because that's what happens when you heat things up. Make the hole expand, and they cool the pin down, and they push it all together, and then it squeezes up, and it's super strong that way. That way you don't have to weld the pin or anything like that to keep the crank nice and true. Um, but it does scare lots of people <laughs> when they take things apart, especially Yamaha's They're like, oh my god, it's all blue, it got super hot, but it didn't. Um, so now let's check. Up and down, I got nothing, absolutely no play there, so that's awesome. Um, I put that crank in there, so <laughs> it's a hot rods crank. I put it in, I don't know, a while back. Time-wise, it's been quite a while. Um, Hours-wise, I don't know, but at least one piston's worth, so. Um, anyway, that's the second piston on that crank. Uh, so now let's take a look at this cylinder and see how we look. I think we should be good to go. All right, the well, cylinder really looks pretty good. Like I said, it's got some marks in it. I think those are all gonna go away when we run a ball home through it. Um, so here comes the super duper controversial part of this video. <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch of people that are gonna yell and scream and say you should not hone a Nicosil plated or plated cylinder. To those people, I say, you're freaking crazy. I use high quality diamond coated uh, ball hones, flex hones, and all it does is deglaze the cylinder and help put a cross hatch back into the chrome plating of the Nicosil plating, whatever you want, it, whatever that's made out of. Um, and I have done that on every motor I've ever done forever, and I've never had a failure because of that. Now, I've had failures before because I made a mistake on something else or whatever. Trust me, I'm not perfect, but. I've never had a problem with uh, ball honing a cylinder, so I am going to do that right now. I'm actually not taking the power valve apart because it moves really, really smooth um, just with my hand. Um, and like I said, it's only one piston in and it looks really clean, so I'm going to leave that alone. Um, also, I'm just dying to get this electric start on um, and that thing seems uh, just fine. So I'm going to hone that thing and then we'll take another look at it when I get done with it. All right, so one of the keys, guys, if you are going to hone a cylinder, which I, like I said, highly recommend doing, 
uh, is you don't want to do it dry and you want to use really high quality hones. Um, so, here we go. Parts washer, we're going to use the solvent that I have, which is mineral spirits, as a lubricant, and we're going to make this thing happen. Get it wet. And now we're breaking all the rules of all you engineers. So that cylinder took less honing than I think any cylinder I've ever done before. That was awesome. This thing looks perfect now. Let me show you. My super gnarly hands. See that cross hatch? That's what you're looking for. It looks absolutely perfect. I am super happy with that. And it looks great all the way, there we go. All the way down in there. Everything looks awesome. Ooh. Everything looks awesome. Really happy with the way that turned out. And that seriously took like 30 seconds, if that long. So yeah, that is just amazing. I don't think I've ever had one clean up that quickly. Um, maybe this cylinder or piston had way less time than I thought. <laughs> uh, either way, now it's brand new. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna slide this thing back together. I'll show you what we're gonna do uh, with that. Uh, to start on this thing, I like to clean up this base gasket surface. I like to use just a normal razor blade. Come in here, get that all nice and cleaned up, no big deal. I'm not gonna insult you by thinking you need to see how to clean a gasket surface. The main thing is don't ding the surface and don't change the surface. So don't use a bunch of power tools. Um, I do use power tools sometimes on them, but with a really mild scotch brite so it won't actually dig into the aluminum. Um, but if I can do it with just a razor blade, I do it with that. So uh, next thing, our piston kit. I really like the Vertex kits because I'll show you why. They come with everything you need. No, this is not sponsored by Vertex at all. <laughs> I wish they would. Vertex, if you want to sponsor me, let me know. Comes with all the gaskets. Obviously a piston and rings. And then the important part, it comes with a top end bearing. Why a normal piston kit doesn't come with a top end bearing, I will never know. Um, except for it's just another way to make money. That's the only explanation I can give. Um, Vertex, or if anybody knows another reason, let me know, please. There we go. I got a B-sized piston because why not? Honestly, it doesn't make that big of a difference. You can run an A or a B or a C or a D in any of the cylinders. Um, you can get closer with some of them, but it's a tiny, tiny difference in them. That thing looks pretty. I love Vertex Pistons. They are the best in my opinion. First things first, gotta check our ring in gap. I'm gonna take our rings, and I'm gonna put them in, and I'm gonna start them. Start with one. Then you take the piston and use that as a guide to make sure it's nice and flat in there. Now we're gonna measure the end gap right there where the ring ends come together. You gotta measure that gap. If that gap is too small, you got real problems because as this heats up, it's gonna grow. And if they ever actually touch, even for a split second, that means it's gonna seize. <laughs> that means that the ring is gonna actually touch the cylinder and not be riding on oil and seize this thing. So you don't want that. If they're too big, then they leak and they don't make enough compression. So that's a lot less of a problem, but we're gonna check it real fast with some feeler gauges. Uh, you, the general rule of thumb is about three thousandths per inch of bore. So let me check what that is. So it's about two and a half inches. So that'd be six, let's go seven thousandths feeler gauge. Come in here and see if we can't get it in there. It's good. One ring. All right, looks good. Here's another thing about piston rings. So there is a top and a bottom. And on the Vertex ones, and I'll see if I can show you. I don't know. There we go. See the T right there? 
that's for the top. So that means that this part of the ring goes up. They're chamfered, actually. They're not, like, if you took a cross-section of this thing, it's not just a rectangle. It's so you want to make sure you do it right. Otherwise, it won't make the right compression. Now, what I do to get ready here, I take one of the rings, or excuse me, I take one of the clips, and I'm going to put it in. But here's the thing. I like to kind of plan out my top end. I still have to take the piston and stuff off of this thing. But I want to work where there's the most room to work. And this cable is in the way. So actually... When I put this thing on and I'm putting the other uh, piston uh, pin clip in, I want to do it from the other side. So, here's what I like to do. I know that the, the uh, arrow on this goes forward, so that means it's going to go on like this. So, over here on the bench, I want to put this clip in first, so that when I slide it on, I'm sliding the new pin in, I'm working on the other side. It's little things like that that make your life easier. It's not like you can't do it the other way, but it's just easier. So, arrow down, we're going to go with this one. One thing that really helps with this is to put the pin in first. Just a pick. I'm going to come in. Come in like this. I keep my thumb. So you want it in the groove there. Put your thumb on it like this so you don't lose the thing. There we go. Now we got it started. You got to keep your thumb over this thing. These things really like to fly around shops. So you do not want to let that go. Then we're just going to ease it down into its groove. There we go. That one's in. Want to take a good look at it, make sure it's all the way around. Open that up. Take that back out. Top end bearing, a little bit of assembly lube. Run that around there. You can also just use two-stroke oil. It's fine. I just have this stuff, and it kind of holds on a little bit better. All right, so now we got to get this piston off. The very first thing you should do anytime you're working on the top end of a motor uh, is once you get things out of the way and cleaned up, is put a rag down here because things like to fall in there, mainly to thwart your happiness. So <laughs> you don't want that happening. Otherwise, it'll be... Digging around, you might end up angry like Mr. Sheets over there. So put that in there first, and then we're going to take this uh, uh, clip out, and then we're going to push the pin out, and hopefully it comes out smooth. If not, I'll show you the tool that we have to do that. So, so even though we have a protector for the crankcase, you still want to keep your thumb over this and try to keep the pin from flying around the shop. Um, just because when they fly and you don't know where they are, it's really disconcerting. Don't ask me how I know. I just do. So, there we go. Hopefully, this will just come on out. That is how they're supposed to come out. <laughs> they don't always, though. Um, I do have a piston pin puller, but fortunately that just came right out, no problem. Now we're going to take our bearing, put it in here, take our piston. And the thing about top ends, or really any work at all, especially motor work, is if it's not just going together smoothly, stop. Because if you have to force it, you're doing something wrong. So you see how easy that slid in, we're all good. Take our clip, we're gonna put it in just like we did over on the bench. Thumb over it to protect. There we go. Arrow's going the right way. Let's go get our rings. Now on two strokes, there is no top or bottom ring. They both go either place, so... But like I said before, you want to make sure the the up and down is right. So we got our T up on both of them. On two strokes, I think you can see here, you see there's a, there's a, a pin there and there's a pin over here. And that's where the ring end gaps go. They have to go there or, I mean, really the cylinder can't go on, but also, if they were to, if those pins weren't there and they somehow ended up in a different place, the rings would catch on the ports of the cylinder. So um, that's why that is there. So 
they're lined up. We're gonna have to redo it again, I'm sure. So now we can take this out because nothing, there's really nothing else to fall down in there. Go get our base gasket. Can't screw up the base gasket because it's very much asymmetrical. So now, to get this cylinder on, we're gonna have to get this piston down a little bit. So we're gonna rotate the motor. I'm gonna try to do this with you guys right up here, so. And yes, I already looked at the reeds and all that. Everything's fine on this bike. It's been running perfectly, so. This is just maintenance and to kind of reset the hour meter or put an hour meter on there, reset everything so I know how much time is on this thing as I do this electric start. I don't know how easy this is gonna be. Squeeze those rings and make sure you got everything lined up and that it goes together smoothly because if there's any forcing here, you're doing damage. There you go. All right, now it's down in there. Check to make sure, push down on it. And we're gonna check and make sure everything rotates nice and smooth. Yeah, just like it's supposed to. And as I do with all my bikes, I like to sign my work. And really now, the hard part's over. Now we're just gonna bolt everything back up, tighten everything back up and uh, hook everything back up. I'll show you how we do that power valve before I get done. When you tighten these base nuts down, there's no real good way to get a good torque reading on it other than like getting a wrench that has the hole here for the torque wrench and then doing calculations because you're out further away from it and all this other crap. Honestly, you just don't need that. It's a two stroke, there's not much to it. You really don't need specific torques on these things. What you need them to be is tight enough not to let anything leak. So, and then I do like to do it in a crisscross pattern. So we'll do this side here. Use our German Guten tight. We'll go over to the front left. Right. Now we'll get our head o rings, put the head on. All right, got our head all cleaned up. I will be putting a new spark plug in it, but this will keep that hole clean for now. That's good. That's good. So I treat these nuts just like I do the base nuts. I don't torque them. I just do a crisscross pattern, get them nice and tight. Since there's nothing spinning up here, like cams or that kind of junk and valves moving around, it just needs to be pretty flat. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be pretty flat and not leak. All right, so that's the top end. Let's go ahead and hook this power valve up, and then I'm gonna be done with this video because I'm not going to fire it up or anything um, because I'm going to put the electric start on. So like I said, I know all of us YouTubers are always saying this, but go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss the e-start video that's coming next. Uh, but let's hook this thing up. I'll show you how that goes. So you're going to start by put the spacer on first. And this guy is going to come and you're going to have to kind of preload it a little bit. There we go. Get that on there. I'm going to put this in there, but I like to put a little red Loctite on this first. And the same thing and going back together. You know, run it in by hand, and then you're going to need your little pick or pin or whatever in there to hold it while you tighten it down. That's pretty much it, guys. Um, so I'm not going to bore you guys with hooking up all the hoses or putting that cover back on. Like I said, I'm getting ready to put the e-start on this thing. So that's what's happening next. Um, but it's all good. 
got lots of compression now, which it did before also, but feels really good. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope you guys like that video. Please ask any questions if I missed anything or if there's anything you didn't understand, ask a question below in the comments. I will get back to you, I promise. I read all the comments. I try to get back to everybody who asked a good question. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Guys, I hope you get out, you spread the gospel of two wheels, and you know what I'm going to say. I hope that what we're doing here at Highland Cycles is inspiring you guys to work on, and more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes! Mm -hmm.